On Friday, a man was killed on his bicycle here on Newtown Pike. We continue to track the investigation into this deadly hit and run. The Rowan County clerk unknowingly issued a marriage license to a woman and a transgender man. Coming up, how the couple managed to get her to sign off on the license. And one of their most daring rescues yet. Crews help a teenager who fell nearly two dozen feet off a cliff. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. A bike shop is talking about a cyclist's recent death. Thanks for staying up with WKYT. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Police say Martiano Pozos was riding his bike down Newtown Pike Friday when Jess Greathouse hit him with his car. Pozos died from his injuries. Greathouse was later arrested and charged in the case. Tonight, WKYT Sam Smith is talking to volunteers at Broke Spoke in Lexington. Sam has our top story at 11. Newtown Pike was the scene of a hit and run on Friday. A cyclist was killed. You always wonder if it's somebody that you know that you become friends with. The victim has been identified as Martiano Pozos. Alan Kirkwood of the Broke Spoke Bike Shop says he didn't know Pozos, but when a cyclist is killed on the road, the cyclist community feels it. Because it's, it's, he's somebody's friend and somebody's father, or, you know, uncle, brother, so you know, there's always loss there. People here at Broke Spoke know what it's like to lose someone that way. Three years ago today, one of their volunteers was killed while on his bicycle. It was a real, it was a real sad day for us here. Thomas Rick Kerr was killed while riding his bike on Russell Cave Road in 2012. Volunteers built a ghost bike in his memory that now hangs in the shop. We thought the most fitting place for it would be to put it down here where he spent most of his time. In Lexington's latest fatal car and bicycle crash, Jess Greathouse has been charged with manslaughter, leaving the scene of an accident and driving under the influence. Kirkwood says motorists and cyclists need to be more aware of each other. It's, uh, it's sad that that happens any time, especially in the case where it, it could have been avoided. In Lexington, Sam Smith, WKYT. Investigators say Pozos was riding with the flow of traffic. Family members say she was a happy, outgoing lady. Tonight, we're learning about the woman who died in a crash in Garrett County. The Garrett County coroner tells us 51 year old Terry Carmack was riding down Highway 1295 yesterday when witnesses say a bird hit her and caused her to lose control. Carmack, we're told, went over a 60 foot embankment. She died at the scene. She could make friends very easily. She was a grandmother. She had five grandchildren that she loved more than life. Um, she really enjoyed riding her motorcycle. Um, you know, she. She was just a really outgoing, fun, happy person. Fox Funeral Home in Stanford is handling her funeral arrangements. Visitation will be Wednesday from 5 to 7. There will also be a public memorial service for Carmack following the visitation. A stay allowing the Rowan County clerk not to issue marriage licenses is set to expire tomorrow. A federal judge issued the temporary stay on his injunction that required clerk Kim Davis to issue licenses so the appeals court could review the case. Friday, Davis filed an emergency petition with the Supreme Court to have a justice review her appeal. She then asked Judge David Bunning to extend the stay while she appeals to the Supreme Court. He denied her request. A transgender couple in Rowan County claims Kim Davis issued them a marriage license back in February. Cameron Colon, who is transgender, and his wife Alexis, who identifies as pansexual, said Davis's office provided the license February 26 without asking for Cameron's birth certificate. The birth certificate identifies Cameron as female. It was issued. They were married that day. It was filed. So, in all actuality, she married a gay couple. The couple participated in yesterday's rally outside the courthouse. Hargis says Cameron and Alexis waited to come forward because they were nervous about how the public would handle the news. The summer weather isn't going anywhere just yet. We're in from some more muggy and humid days here in the bluegrass. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking some storms and showers taking us into the work week. Yeah, it's going to be a very summer like week as we move forward with daytime highs running around average, which put, just puts us in the mid 80s. But that humidity 
It's going to be rather uncomfortable. Out there tonight, we're tracking a few showers across parts of southeastern Kentucky on Defender. Temperatures in the upper 60s, low 70s, generally throughout the entire area. So overnight, most of us end up in the mid 60s, upper 60s for a few of us. We won't cool off a whole lot. That's what happens when you get higher levels of humidity in the air. You just don't cool quite as much. Plume of moisture kind of throwing some of those showers into southeastern Kentucky. We have a Eventually weakening completely out of existence frontal boundary hanging out to our north. And that's why we've had a few showers and storms riding along it, and it's going to wash out completely, and that means it disappears from our weather picture. So it never gets into Kentucky. We'd like to see that because that shakes things up a little bit. Muggy morning for all tomorrow, around 66, kind of a general temperature. By lunchtime, we'll likely track maybe a stray shower or thunderstorm, but that humidity grows stronger at that point as well. And then maybe even a few more showers and storms into the afternoon and evening. Nothing that's going to be wall to wall, nonstop rain. It's that scattered stuff that we had out there today and yesterday. We'll take a closer look and track it hour by hour coming up for you in just a few minutes. Lexington police made another gang recruitment arrest as part of a year long investigation. Officers arrested 42 year old Thomas Wallace Jr. Friday night in Lexington. They originally arrested three people Thursday for the same crime. Gregory Smith, Gerald Smith, and Trevor Spencer were all charged with gang recruitment. Police say they were participating in an initiation ritual in Whitney Young Park. The Lexington police chief says investigators have been watching those men throughout the year. Danville police are looking for a man they say tried to rob a hotel. We're told he walked into the Comfort Suites on Bell Alley Drive just before 6.30 this morning. Police say he showed a handgun to the front desk clerk and demanded cash. Before he was able to take any money, they say he took off. Police describe him as wearing a blue bandana over his face with dark pants and a dark sweatshirt. A teenager is recovering tonight after rescue crews say he fell more than 20 feet off a cliff. Volunteers say the hiker was climbing near Pilot Knob in Powell County at the time. Multiple agencies had to help with the rescue. Volunteers say it was one of the most challenging rescues they've ever performed. One member of the team made a huge difference by bringing a suction unit to the crew. He ran back down, got a suction unit, ran back up the hill, passed us to the top to get the suction unit to this guy. And it kept this guy's lungs clear and, and, and he, kept, he kept breathing the way down. So it was a, he's a hero. Very humble man, very kind man, very a hero. The teenager went to the hospital with several injuries, including head trauma. We have an update for you on a story we've been following out of Laurel County. The family of Chris Gilbert, the man diagnosed with Legionnaire's disease two weeks ago, says he's now being treated at UK Chandler Hospital. Gilbert's father tells us crews airlifted him there Wednesday. He is still breathing with the help of a ventilator, but his father says he's starting to hold oxygen on his own. We wish him the best on his long road to recovery. An adoption organization is asking for help tracking down a dog that just ran away from his forever home. Adoption leaders with Woodstock Animal Foundation say Mr. Snow, an eight year old miniature schnauzer, went missing in the Molly Way area of Georgetown yesterday. Mr. Snow spent the first eight years of his life at a puppy mill and is deaf. He can see danger, but he can't hear danger coming after him. And we know that the coyote population is very high in this area, so that's why we're reaching out to the public to help us find him. Adoption leaders say Mr. Snow is nervous around most people. If you do come across him, they recommend offering him food or treats. A prayer vigil was held tonight for the sheriff's deputy shot and killed while pumping gas in Houston. Investigators have charged a man with the murder, but are struggling to determine a motive. Kenneth Craig is in Texas. Hundreds of people marched from a church to this Chevron gas station in Houston for a prayer vigil to honor Harris County Sheriff's Deputy Darren Goforth. The 10 year veteran was gassing up his patrol car when he was shot multiple times Friday night. I mean, a gas station, they're saying that there's an officer down. In the vehicle. Within 24 hours, police arrested 30 year old Shannon Miles. Police are still searching for a motive. It strikes us in the heart to, to simply be a target because you wear a badge and for no other reason 
hit you where you live. Miles' criminal history dates back a decade. In 2006, he was convicted of disorderly conduct with a firearm to now facing a capital murder charge. Every day, the memorial grows at the spot where Goforth was gunned down. Family and friends are trying to make sense of the tragedy. Kenneth Craig, CBS News. Miles is expected to be in court tomorrow. A Louisville teenager is back in jail. Police arrested 19 year old Josh Young this week on an outstanding warrant. Young was acquitted in 2013 of killing his stepbrother. According to an arrest warrant, Young violated the terms of his parole by failing to report to his parole officer. He was convicted of promoting contraband earlier this year. Since he was acquitted on the murder charge, Young has had multiple run ins with law enforcement. A Laurel County mother faces charges tonight after police say she used her son to help her shoplift. Deputies arrested 28 year old Casey King Friday night at the Walmart near Corbin. Investigators tell us employees saw King hiding items on herself and on her six year old son. They say she tried to leave the store without paying for those items. They're valued at more than $60. King is charged with theft by unlawful taking and endangering the welfare of a minor. Her son is now in the custody of another family member. Rescue crews in eastern Kentucky are trying to teach people how to survive and save others in swift waters. Dozens of people from across the region were at the Floyd County Emergency and Rescue Squad's water rescue training this weekend. They practiced swimming across a lake, pulling a victim out of the water, and rescuing themselves. Paintsville firefighter and paramedic Mary LaMaster says she was one of the first to get near the floodwaters in Johnson County last month. She says there was nothing she could do to help save people. And that feeling of helplessness is something she never wants to experience again. I believe in life. Um, I'm a first responder. I'm a paramedic. I've, I try to save. That's what I do. And if I can't save, then I'm not being a benefit. So it's, I have to. I'm driven to save people's lives. Their next class will be at the end of September. A Kentucky great grandmother made an appearance at MTV's Video Music Awards tonight. 87 year old Helen Van Winkle, known as Batty, lived in Madison County for 50 years. Her outrageous style caught the attention of many in the music industry. Her fashion sense earned her a trip to one of the most popular music award shows. I have a lot of friends in Richmond uh, that. Uh, they're they're amazed and they support me fully, uh, but you know, and all those college kids, uh, univer you know the EKU, uh, they all know me. I've had picture, numerous pictures made with them. Winkle recently moved to Knoxville, Tennessee.